In this video, we will be looking at one-to-one -one relationships and recursive relationships between entities in a data model and how these relationships are instantiated within SQL. One-to-one -one relationships exist between a variety of different types of entities. Head of departments is one example of two entities, that is, individuals in a department, and the departments themselves in an organization that have a one-is-to-one -one relationship. What may be some other examples of one-is-to-one -one relationships? Take a second to think about it. A few other types of one-is-to-one -one relationships include heads of state or heads of federal and state organizations. In fact, heads of organizations tend to be one of the most common one-to-one -one relationships. A one-is-to-one -one relationship can exist between two entities, but modeling such a relationship requires a label on it. The reason that we need a label on it is because the substance or the meaning behind many-to-many -many and one-to-many relationships can be inferred from the type of relationships between the entities. However, a one-is-to-one -one relationship has no distinguishing characteristic of the entities, and as such, needs to be labeled. In this example, we have a department and employee entities, and the one-is-to-one -one relationship between these two entities is the department's boss, and subsequently it needs to be labeled. One can label a relationship in MySQL using the caption tool or the note tool. Let us take a look at an example of creating a data model that contains a one-to-one -one relationship and let us work with the example of department and employees. We can create two entities in this data model, one being a department with its specific attributes of department ID, department name, and a phone number for instance. Our second entity will be the employees that belong to the department. This employee has an employee ID, employee name, a location where they work, for instance, and <clears throat> and for instance, a contact phone number. These are two entities, one called department, one called employee. There are two types of relationships that can exist between a department and an employee. An employee belongs to a department and a department has many employees. That's a one is to many relationship and for that we use the one colon n non-identifying relationship. The foreign key is going to be an employee with the primary key in department. And so we have a value of department ID within employee that represents the department an employee belongs to. In addition to this one is to many relationship, there is another relationship that exists between these two entities and that is of the department's boss. To create this relationship, the department's boss, between these two entities, we need to take some information from employee and put it in department or some information from department and put it in employee. This information is going to be which employee is the head of each department. And so to capture information about department's boss, we need another primary key form key relationship. So we have two options. We can take department ID and put it into employee once again so that next to each employee we have information about the department that they're working in and another department ID that captures which department they're the head of. The other option is to take employee ID and put it in the department table to capture information about which employee is the head of which department. These are the two options that are present. One option is to have another department ID in employee to capture which department an employee runs. The other option is to have 
an MPID in department to capture which department is run by which employee. These are our two options to have a foreign key in department, which is MPID, or a foreign key in employee, which is another department ID. To be honest, we can go either way with this. You can use department ID once again in employee, or you can use employee ID in department. While both options are potentially correct, there is one more appropriate answer. And the more appropriate answer would be to have employee ID in department as a foreign key. And there is a reason for this. Employee ID in department as a foreign key gives us the fewest null values in department. If department ID were present in employee once again and used to indicate the head of the department, we would have a lot of null values in that column because not every employee is a head of a department. On the other hand, every department has an employee as its head. And so, employee ID in department would result in the fewest number of null values. To create that relationship, we would need to click on the one colon one dashed line, which is the non-identifying relationship. Once we click on that, please notice at the left-hand corner of MySQL Workbench, it says, select the table to receive the foreign key. And that would be the department table. And the message changes, it says department selected. Please select the reference table. In this case, it would be the employee table. This one is to one relationship would be the boss of the department. And so that would be the employee ID in the department table. That would represent which employee is the boss of which department. One of the concerns when you have two entities with two relationships between them and both entities have foreign keys is which entity do you make first? If you make the department entity, you're going to have one column called employee ID that requires the employee table to exist so that you can refer to it as a foreign key. On the other hand, if you make the employee table first, you're going to have a column called department ID as a foreign key that requires the department table to exist first because of the constraint of referential integrity. Consequently, one makes a choice. One makes a choice as to which foreign key do you want to not have the referential integrity constraint on. In this case, one can make the choice that employee ID in the department is not going to have the referential integrity constraint. It is more vital that employees belong in the right department so that department ID and employee accurately refer back to department ID and department so that the referential integrity constraint for the one-to-many relationship is more significant and more vital than the referential integrity constraint of the one-to-one -one relationship. Consequently, we would go ahead and make the department table first where there is a column called employee ID, but that employee ID column does not necessarily have constraint on it. After making the department table, we would go ahead and make the employee table and have the department ID in the employee table have a referential integrity constraint based on the department ID column in the department table. We have two entities in this data model a department and an employee, and two relationships between these two entities. A department has many employees, and that's the one-is-to-many relationship, and an employee is the boss of the department, and that's the one-is-to-one -one relationship which is labeled. Now, there is one other relationship that exists in this data model that is not present and that is not depicted, and so let us go ahead and do that. In an organization, 
employees can supervise other employees. In fact, one employee can supervise many other employees and those employees tend to be supervised by only one other employee. And so employees have a relationship with other employees and that is the supervisory relationship. In data modeling terminology, that is known as a recursive relationship. An employee is related to other employees or the employee entity is related to itself. That takes the following form. Because one employee can supervise many employees, we have to use the 1 colon n, 1 is to many relationship. In this case, the table to receive the foreign key is going to be the employee table. Employee ID is going to be present in the employee table once again as a foreign key, telling us that this employee is supervised by who. So the table to receive the foreign key will be the employee table and the reference table will also be the employee table. And so this is a recursive one-to-many relationship that an employee has with itself. Again, this relationship needs to be labeled. And so I'm going to say that this is the supervisory relationship that exists. That one employee supervises many other employees. One can change the name of the foreign key to be supervisor ID. Again, supervisor ID is the foreign key that is referencing employee ID in the same table. To give you a sense of what the employee table will look like, I have Excel open right below the employee entity so that we can get a sense of what this table might actually look like. So let's think of an employee ID 1 with the employee name Nickel and location and a phone and a certain department ID, the department in which that employee might work. So let's say MIS and this person would need a supervisor ID. Now, the thing to keep in mind is when you're working with recursive relationships, employee ID needs to be present as a primary key first before it can actually be used as a foreign key in the same entity. That means the first employee that's actually inserted as data in the employee table should be the head of the organization because they supervise every other employee. And so usually the first employee inserted does not have a supervisor because there is no employee that that supervisor would actually, supervisor ID would refer to. For the second employee with the employee ID two, this individual can in fact have a supervisor ID because there is only one employee that can supervise the second employee we can have the supervisor ID of one saying that employee who has the ID two is supervised by the person who has the employee ID one again now employee ID with the ID three can be supervised by employees that have the ID either one or two in this case, let's say the person is supervised by employee ID 1. And so you can now understand how data is actually inserted and the relationship that exists between rows that exist in the same table. Supervisor ID is another column that's present in the employee table. And this column refers back to the primary key employee ID in the very same table. The first row of this table is not going to have a supervisor ID because that person is the big boss of the entire organization. And 
supervises other people, but no one supervises them. This is how an employee table can be related to itself with a recursive relationship. In this example, there is a recursive one-to-many relationship of an employee with themselves.